right, I'd like to call to order the uh, Village of Woodstock Board of uh, Village Trustees meeting for February 11th at uh, 7.02. And we'd like to start off with citizens' comments. Uh, yes, John Spector. I have a quick comment. John Spector, um, I I'm going to miss the, uh, the discussion, or I may miss the discussion on the, uh, the uh, town, the, the, no, it's the uh, dangerous, and dangerous and Vacant Building and Property Ordinance. Um, so I just wanted to make the trustees aware that during this year, one of our working groups on supporting local business is, I hope, going to take up the question of whether or not we should create some incentives for building owners and homeowners in the village area, in the sort of central downtown area, to enhance the look of their facade and make sure things look really nice and clean. I understand this could be controversial. We should be, you know, people should be taking, so I'm not saying we're going to do it. Uh, it's just, we're going to look at it. It's just one of the issues that will be on the agenda. If you all are discussing or at some point this year thinking about a policy which I suspect will be a, a stick, we could potentially be developing a carrot. And the implementation of the stick might be made easier if there were a carrot. Like, you know, in, in the next two years, the EDC will match one for one the spending if people were, you know, paint their facade or fix their, you know, whatever. I'm not promising that we'll do that at all, but I just want to let you know that we were consider we might consider it and if there's coordination that's needed as you think if you think that that would be a more powerful way to go about it through a, as you consider this throughout the course of the year then just keep that in mind i just want to make sure the two committees are tied together great thank you john yep. and that was just for residents or businesses and residents you don't know we don't know I, i'm just saying that one of the things we think about supporting local businesses yeah. is yeah. making like sure that the village yeah. looks good yeah. thank you john an intriguing idea that uh, carrot and stick is a nice idea. Any other citizens' comments? Carrie Egan. I would like uh, Carrie Egan. Um, I don't know if anybody has any in with the new owners of the restaurant, Coburn's. formerly Bentley, Coburn's, but maybe they can put it out to them to put out a cigarette thing again. Because in one week, it's horrendous the amount of cigarettes that are all over the sidewalk. Thank you. <laughs> Nobody's going to argue with you on that, Jerry. That's, that's a good idea. All right, any other citizens' comments? All right, hearing none. Uh, Nikki, do we have any additions or deletions? Okay, so moving forward to permits. Covered Bridges Half Marathon. Is there someone here to speak to the Covered Bridges Half Marathon? We are well familiar with uh, this particular uh, event, and I don't see any changes uh, in it. It's June 7th, uh, Sunday, and we've had this for many years. I make a motion to allow the Covered Bridges Marathon to go on as presented. Second. Any further discussion on the Covered Bridges Marathon? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next. A, a fairly new one, but very favorite, Puppies and Pooches on Parade. <laughs> hey. Peggy Fraser to speak to that. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you very much. Uh, well, believe it or not, this will be our sixth annual. Oh, wow. So still sounds new. It's still new, but uh, anyway, <laughs> it would be, we've applied for the permit. Uh, it would be the last Saturday, as it always is in August, which is week before Labor Day. Um, and it is um, an event which has been attracting many dogs. We have put a 70 dog limit, a cap, uh, on it because otherwise it would get totally How insane. many did you have left? 70. 70. Uh, it includes a dog that we, we, we 
um, coordinate with Lucy Mack. Lucy Mack puts um, um, a dog into the show, and it's been very nice that for the last couple of years that dog has been uh, adopted. Um, we also they have a booth. We do for the second, and third year. We will have hot dogs for sale and that's by the memory tree so that we can plug it in. Um, it's really the same format. Um, our insurance is through the Woodstock Insurance, through Lisa. Um, the biggest money-making part of it truly is the sponsors, which we set up a table outside of the library in advance for advanced sales, and that does well. Obviously, this, this is a fundraiser by the Friends of the Norman Williams Public Library uh, for dedicated to the library itself. Um, we um, have a, about 30 volunteers, so it's quite a wonderful team. Mm -hmm. And with the, the dogs, those participants and all, I think we might get close to 200 people on the green. 175, 200, something in there. Macy's always around and um, we um, also, probably set up about 9 o'clock in the morning. The event officially starts at 10.30, it's over at noon. And then the cleanup, so we're off the green by uh, 1 o'clock, and I think it looks just the way, as beautiful as it always does. Um, do you have any questions, or? It sounds like there's no major changes. No changes, really. Oh, I move we approve as presented. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Thank you very much for putting this on for the library and for entertaining many people as well. It's great. Thank you all. On to our police chief's report, Chief Blish. Sir. Yeah. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> we've hired uh, two new officers, one part-time, one full-time. Both of those officers, um, one is Al Patterson, He's retired from Hanover Police Department. The other uh, person we hired is Caleb McIntyre. He has uh, corrections, corrections experience dating back to 2012, but he'll have to go through the full-time academy. But they're both going to go to the part-time academy in March, and then uh, we'll get them trained up and, and working. So uh, the snow cleanup is tonight. Just a reminder, everybody, make sure your cars are off the street, please, to, to facilitate that and so we don't have to tow your car. Also, uh, Officer LeBlanc participated in the polar plunge in Burlington and Lake Champlain to benefit Special Olympics of Vermont uh, last week. Uh, and parking meters. The uh, revenues were pretty much even with what we had last year. Um, $7,894 were last year, this time, and $7,258 was this year, January, January for 2020. We also met with the, um, the IPS rep. IPS is the meter company we currently have. We met with that rep today, Mark Burling. Uh, we did a walk around with the parking committee, and maybe Anna will speak to it a little bit more. Feel free to jump in if I miss something. We're exploring different options for the meters as we've discussed previous. One of the options, or a couple of the options is number one, we can upgrade to this particular company's uh, more, uh, second generation meter or, or their newest generation, or we can go to uh, maybe kiosks and have a little, have some some single space meters as we currently have and then the majority though would be kiosks. So we did a walk about there and we, just to get some some pricing and we, you know we want to bring a complete picture to the trustees before we we make any solid recommendations. I think we, we're just exploring all our options right now so that's where we're at with the parking committee meeting. What did, he, uh, did you address with him he at did. all her lack of response? We were very, I was very upfront about it. I addressed it to him directly and then in the uh, committee meeting, I brought it up there, and um, he was aware of it. He, he, on his side of it, as the rep side, he was, his, his response is fine. It, I, it was all on the technical support customer service side. It was very clear that that was a big issue for us, and that you know we had some real problems with that. 
Um, he recognized that. He did say that their company was growing really fast. Some things are, they have addressed a lot of those issues. They recognize that there, there needs to be better response on that side of the house and that they, he thinks that that's going to get better going forward because they've invested some money into making some changes into that. Um, I that think part of it too is that they were slow to service the uh, refurbished models. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, yeah, they just didn't like have the stuff for it, or it was hard to get the parts and the pieces. And, yeah. Well, that said, well, if we were to upgrade it, we new equipment, so we'd probably have a better experience going forward. But yeah, no, we did talk about it. That's all I have for that so far. Any questions? Uh, any other questions? Uh, how about how about uh, Road conditions, uh, and, and oh, sure. We had four arrests last month. We wrote 90 tickets. We participated in the Governor's Highway Safety Program, um, the Border to border, border I told you about. In addition to that, we also had some uh, regular Governor's Highway Safety Patrols. Um, the sidewalk conditions, I did want to mention that. This weather has been kind of crazy for that. I know people have tried to keep up with it. I, I, I understand that they are not optimal right now, and, and I know some folks are probably not pleased with them. I know people are trying to do the best they can to keep them clear. There's clever, they're removing snow tonight, so they're going to be snowy again tomorrow, and we're getting more snow Thursday. But with this ice storm that we had, I think it really wreaked havoc with a lot of us. <laughs> it's worse than I've ever seen are the number of cars that are parking in front of Vermont Flannel or Gillingham's right in the crosswalk yeah. pulling out and, and just parking right there and, and when the lines are snow covered like that we we will ticket it but we don't we won't tow off of the crosswalk um, because sometimes especially if they're out of town they may not realize it you think common sense would prevail but I realize it doesn't always happen they realize it, but i saw some people struggling today and yeah. i actually observed our ticket person walk past a car that was parked there <coughs> right in the crosswalk and not say anything to them and okay. continue and i walked up and i said you're parked right in the crosswalk they opened their door and they said oh yeah and they moved <laughs> and they moved but um we we need to be really cognizant of that particular spot i think that's a trouble spot i agree so i'll make sure i, I get the word out thank you Thank you. That's where a bumbo would be. Bumbo. <laughs> With flour. If it With was hidden. If it's hidden no. Thank you for that report. Okay, moving on to uh, our village manager's report. Frank. I think you only have two things. The, uh, you have the financial report. Are there any questions? We're pretty much on track. Uh, income and expense wise, we should be at 58%. If you do it on a pure monthly basis, the, uh, it is always the case there's anomalies because of seasonal uh, issues. But does uh, anybody have any questions? Oh, I have one, and, and for you, and it might be for our Chief Blish, actually. Uh, the police revenue is lagging versus the budget. Is that a timing issue, or do we not? I haven't, I haven't seen the, the revenue numbers for that, but... Generally speaking, the state, as you know, they pay us. They pay us when they when they choose to pay us. And that, it could be that that could be the reason. Mm -hmm. The judicial bureau sends out the the checks when they send them out. Uh, uh, interest income, just so everyone else knows, Frank explained to me, it simply hasn't. Where you see that thousand dollar figure versus five dollars, simply yeah. hasn't been credited in, in there yet. Um, I have no other questions, but do any other trustees have any questions on the report? Is that 425 that wasn't budgeted? Is that from short term rentals? No, that hasn't come into effect yet, has it? Uh, it hasn't. No. Uh, the 425 from uh, fees and permits? You don't know what it is. That's fine. I'm Just sorry, curious. I still didn't get it. This 425 here. That wasn't budgeted for fees. Well, we wouldn't have budgeted because we didn't know we were. Right. To do no, it. I know. I'm curious if that's what it is. But she just wondered if it had come in from <coughs> short-term rentals or. Quite honestly, I don't know. Three seventy-five. No, four seventy-five. Four twenty-five on line three. Okay. We got more money. Yeah. Uh, from the time mine was printed, mine was only three seventy-five. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Ding so ding. Things are good. 
Uh, well, then it, it could be. Probably right. Right. Yeah. Then, it, then it could be for that. I know some short-term rentals have come in. People have come yeah, in and they registered. have? Okay. Yes. Interesting. Good. Yes, they have. And folks should know that they only have till uh, April, uh, till the end of April, to register if they plan on having short-term rentals in their home in the village. And with this new ordinance, it is to everyone's benefit to make sure that they <coughs> register because the uh, enforcement is going to be strict this year. Okay, moving on. Old uh, business. Oh, yep. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. I, I brought the details tonight, so I'm, I'm better off to you. Oh, okay. Um, use of the green uh, is $200. Curb cuts and permits are, are 175 And I don't know where the other $50 came from. Oh, okay. It's a... Uh, your sheet is ahead of mine. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's it, Frank? Oh, uh, no, I have one other thing. The, <coughs> just so we're all aware, uh, we're continuing to use the same lobbyists that we've used in the past uh, for the truck issues. Um, I meet by phone with her once a week. Um, and Senator Clarkson and Representative Kimball uh, are keeping a close eye on what's happening in Montpelier. Okay. There is, is there always, there's the Truck and Bus Association that would like to see the Woodstock exemption go away, but we have our people on the job. Great. Great. That's great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving along, uh, Old Business uh, Rockefeller Endowment Fund is on here. Um, there has been some conversation about Rather than taking principal away from that fund, utilizing that fund as collateral to pay interest uh, and payments on um, a larger loan for infrastructure in the village. Mm -hmm. And at this point, it's too early other than to say we could be researching that. I would like the board to decide if that was something that we would all agree on recommending as a direction to take as one source of income to take care of infrastructure problems in the village. Mm -hmm. I, I would be. And that's what we talk, Patrick Proctor yeah. did. He did a great job with that. And yes. um, I, I think it would lead us to realize that that is the right way to go. Well, if, uh, if we're all in agreement, uh, as of just a recommendation, um, then uh, we should pass that along to the select board uh, to uh, take into mm -hmm. consideration. And the two boards working together control that fund. so. Perhaps that could be um, a good way to use it without diminishing its principle. Yes. Yeah, I think at the end of that presentation, that's what we all agreed was. And they hadn't thought of that, and they needed just to wanted, revisit just it. Just want to formalize it, and then then we'll find out maybe to have that committee do you need, investigate do we, it. Do we need a motion? Well, Probably not, right? Need, it's no, just a recommendation. A recommendation. Uh, so at this point, though, we're recommending the committee investigate that. How's that? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. <laughs> Moving along to new business, the proposed conveyance of the Faulkner Park and Trails by the trustee of the Marion Faulkner Trust to the town of Woodstock. Anyone here to speak to that tonight? Yes. A little group over here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start. Okay. <clears throat> Wendy Marinin, uh, live in the village. Um, Thank you for having this on your agenda. Uh, I'm representing, as are the others with me, a small volunteer or uh, resident organized group called the Faulkner Park Working Group, uh, to give ourselves a name. Um, we represent ideas that have been contributed by a large body of people but as a working group, we're organizing and, and representing. Um, we, um, I want to bring, our goal tonight is twofold, would be to make sure that the information that's available and out there to everyone on this particular proposal and dialogue and concerns is even. Uh, our experience, uh, leading up to getting involved and speaking out was that there was no communication about this and there was a great deal and there still is a great deal of 
misunderstanding and misinformation amongst our town, uh, uh, specifically who even owns the park. If you just talk to your passerby in town and ask them, do you know who owns Faulkner Park, you, you'll get a range of answers. I've been experimenting. <laughs> so at any rate, um, our second goal in, in sharing with you uh, this topic is to ask or ask where and why and how um, all of the above, but a big question, why isn't the, why aren't, what's the, what's the plural, the singular, why isn't the board, the village, the board of trustees involved in this dialogue uh, up to this point? Given that, I don't right, have the exact the footage, lies within the village of half of it. I mean, I have a map for right. you. Right, I know, a lot of it. Though. So, um, I have some documents for you. I want to give them to you if you don't have them or if you would like them. And what we brought tonight is the actual proposal that was submitted to the select board by the trust. We brought our actual letter that was submitted to the select board showing questions. Uh, that's part of the minutes and is public record. And I also got a map from Michael Brands. We, we chose the map on his wall that's the, actually it's a zoning map. He did a subset of the park that shows a line for the village, and it's roughly half. He doesn't have exact math. So I have a packet for each of you, um, so that you can uh, read and follow this dialogue thus far in terms of public record. And um, okay. So uh, we feel that it's a community issue, but it's certainly, has a huge impact on the village because of its location and access point. Um, it's a, as you may all be very familiar with the park, it's a happily and heavily used park. Um, and you have both documents, but you don't have the map. Okay. Do you want all three? Just so you know Just, what we Yeah, so I have them right now. Yeah. So, um, so generally speaking, just to give you a quick outline, uh, a couple of days uh, before the proposal went to the select board in November, uh, a member of our group heard about this proposal accidentally uh, and was immediately concerned because being a local resident in the village and in close proximity to the park, thought we would at least have heard about this idea somehow in the community. So that was um, unnerving to us, but I was able to go to the November 19th, 2019 select board meeting and hear the proposal presented by the trust. And I did raise some questions at that meeting, there are the minutes of that meeting. Um, we followed up in December uh, with, um, more dialogue, more questions being presented from a group of people sharing concerns. And then in January, we presented a summary in writing to be included, and you have a copy of, of our concerns for starting point uh, in the agenda of the select board's meeting. Um, right now, the select board is considering approaches that may or may not include a citizens committee. It's unclear. Uh, and it, it, they're, it, they're not rushing to a decision, I would say. But uh, in the course of that meeting that Jeffrey was at, I, I did ask him, what about the trustee's voice or recommendation or involvement? How does this work? We don't fully understand uh, when there's a combo, <clears throat> town and village concern, how it's managed, monitored, and how decisions are made. So that's one of our main questions. Um, but we'd also like to take this opportunity to really bring you guys up to speed on what we do know and what uh, we'd like you to think about, you know, to have a dialogue, I guess, if you will. Other members are, have points they, they can make, but, um, and I do want to add on a side note, back to the misinformation and the confusion, even in the trust proposal, there are misstatements. 
For example, Marion Faulkner's date of death. Um, we are, it's public record, you have, one has access to Marion Faulkner's will, which um, we encourage the select board to read in its entirety, rather than excerpts in the proposal. But in the course of us comparing documents, we've, we're disheartened when we find misinformation. There's a missing comma that changes how a sentence can be read. Things like that. So um, we are digging in and diving into documents and the whole picture in a, in a detailed way to fully understand uh, what the, the impact could be and what the reasons, why would this be a good thing? So. Um, uh, let's see, but anyway, I just, and thirdly, on misinformation, I want to add that from, in 2009, the Walkwood stock map came out that shares trails, the nice brochure, mm -hmm. I, have a, I had a couple in my house, come to find out, uh, there's a beautiful article written by Bob Holt, who surveyed the park in 2015, that there was a huge misunderstanding and assumption made by the town as to where the boundaries of Faulkner Park were. That was corrected in 2015. The chamber and the buildings, the National Park are now distributing maps that are correct with the proper boundaries of Faulkner Park, I'm happy to say. Uh, but the kiosk at the base of the trail in the village in our park is still incorrect. It does not show the appropriate boundaries of Faulkner Park in terms of ownership. So these are things that bother me. <laughs> the, the, how misinformation can continue uh, without taking a closer look. So um, that those are just small points, but they add up to one wanting to ask more questions. Um, so I leave it to other members to add or to you to ask uh, and create a dialogue. I, I, uh, I mean, one thing that strikes me, and I hope the whole trustees, is because this is in the village, a uh, part of it, certainly the flat part and part of it. Well, even into, if you look at the map, the last page I gave yeah. it's higher than this last page. I, I, I know it's higher than, but that's the obvious section. Um, I would like a. Uh, us to we have a and unlike past history in the town of Woodstock there's a, a wonderful rapport between the select board and the village trustees on all sorts of issues and I would hope that the select board would want to work with us in, ter for, in terms of a discussion to discuss this and I would recommend that that we do that as a starting place um, on this and um, I do have a, one question for you since you've done the research, and we have not as of yet, what happens if the town says, no thank you? Is there any change in what the, how the trust manages that part? Um, well, the trust would then decide what other course of action would be taken. Our best understanding, can you take over a minute? Sure. Our best understanding is that the trust, J.P. Morgan is, interested in not owning real property and also is interested in not making on the ground decisions when they are local. So there's some, if you will, busy work involved. Uh, Jim Worth reports to them, submits receipts. When things come up, a decision has to be made on expenditures by the trustee, the bank. So those are, we think, their incentives, their reasons. What's built into the will, however, and hasn't been pursued by the trust, but we're um, hoping to propose, is an alternative structure they can appoint, a nonprofit type alternative local structure to manage the park. And um, Grant, Graham, uh, can speak to that a little more. We're, we're not at that point, but we are working on those questions. Go ahead. Uh, without, without taking on the liability. Uh, well, that's, that's <laughs> to be sorted out exactly in, the, um, in this 
alternate proposal. Sure. Hi, um, I'm Graham Hanke. I'm on 6 Mountain Avenue. And uh, yeah, I think our concern is that um, once you pierce the trust and you separate out Faulkner Park, there's a whole series of legal and financial ramifications that extend from that. And that's, you know, once you do that, it's, uh, you know, that's something that can't be replaced. And so we think that that action should be taken very, very carefully and after a lot of deliberation. And I, for one, feel that it doesn't seem like a lot of that deliberation has happened. Or if it has happened, it's happened behind closed doors and the information hasn't been shared. And I think that's what sparked a lot of the concern uh, amongst all of us right. in I the don't community. Think it's happened in terms of the select board doing anything. No, the no. This, this, uh, it seems like the proposal that came before the select board was already sort of fully baked and, and ready to go. And, and I would have thought as a citizen, something like that would have been given a bit more due diligence and, and study. What was the catalyst, if you don't mind me interrupting? My understanding is that, um, as Wendy indicated, that J.P. Morgan is kind of tired of dealing with the day-to-day -day issues associated with running the park and being responsible for fielding requests to have weddings there or a tree has fallen what do we do um, things like that and and again I don't know this for a fact but it's what I've heard here say is that this is a trend in the trust business that trusts are trying to get out of that type of management um, and I, I think some of their concerns are probably legitimate um, but there's a whole range of solutions I think that can maybe relieve them of some of that burden short of breaching the trust and having those legal and financial ramifications. Um, and I think that's the type of thing a community group could explore. Um, and so I think that's sort of an inspired idea coming out of the select board is, hey, let's slow this down. Let's pull some people together to really take a hard look at it, come back with some recommendations, and then has a community make a decision what can happen. Well, I think that, uh, speaking for these trustees, we're in agreement with you on uh, what you've discussed and that uh, more deliberation is necessary. And uh, we would like to be involved with the select board <coughs> on that discussion. So thank you. I mean, it, citizens taking it in their own hands to do something in a, in a, a town our size is, is wonderful and, and actually can change things. And uh, so thank you for it doing the work you've been doing well, and, and stay would, and stay involved I would add one other thing that you know a, a long-term solution is creating a citizens That's group it. to help manage yeah. the park so manage and then maybe that a small thing should we allow this wedding here that could be decided locally the price, yeah exactly. and then they can hold on to <coughs> the trust uh, in, the, in the main form it already is mm -hmm. yes Wendy I, I would also speaking of the trust clarify something you may already fully understand that the trust manage uh, is an umbrella for funding for the homestead this is the same trust and the rec center and then there's a smaller trust that's a little different that um, that helps but it that needs. is that was also funded by this right. by mrs faulkner separate it's a, it's it's a do good for people who who are in need residents of woodstock that are in need and that's done a little differently but and it's it's separate it's too separate. so there's two trusts but the one big one and it's big houses those three entities and uh, one of our group members gave me the word triumvirate why would we break up this and shave a piece off to the detriment of maybe all of them in terms of having flexibility so you know it's in a context it's not just the park in, in the big picture. Thank you. Any other questions, folks? Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, moving along, uh, we have a climate emergency and action resolution. <coughs> so we should have a copy of. <coughs> Yes. 
Is anyone going to speak to that tonight? Dan and Richard and I am here as well. Thank you, Mary. Um, that was um, submitted. I'll speak briefly and then let them tell you the substance of it. That was submitted to us with adequate signatures if it were to go on the warning. However, if you read on the front at the top, that is not what it is asking. It is asking for the um, trustees and the select board to adopt a resolution <clears throat> for this climate emergency to have our emissions at net zero, pardon me, aiming at having <laughs> our um, emissions by 2030 at net zero. Um, there is not a formal resolution prepared. There are many items that would be considered on the back of what you have there. And um, when it came up to go on the warning, Frank realized that wasn't appropriate. So Anne was out of town at the time, and Anne and Richard are the people who initiated this to us. So once they returned, we had a conversation with them. The select board has agreed to pass a resolution once it is completely written. And if the trustees agreed to support it, we wanted to bring you on board. But it had to come to you as it came to us for discussion. And they'll talk with you better about it because they are more familiar with each aspect of it. So, um, thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Mary's been helping us because we we really messed up on it. Basically, <coughs> we had um, just thought that it would go on the warning and then go to the town meeting, as other petitions I've worked on have. But the way we worded it um, made uh, you realize that we were asking that it be adopted by the select board and the village trustees. It didn't need to be that way, it, but w it was our inexperience. But now that it is that way and the select board has said yes, um, then we would hope you would too. And then at the town meeting, we can talk about why it's important and, and what it's asking for and how it ties in <coughs> with the hope of a energy coordinator regional energy coordinator, how that ties in with that. And so the people at the meeting then <coughs> would not be voting, right, Mary? I'm sorry? They wouldn't be voting. It would take a sense of the meeting, but it would be a non-binding. Mm -hmm. So I guess what we're really asking Action. is that you will get on board with it, uh, even though we didn't do it correctly. Questions? <laughs> 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 uh, a couple of questions. And, and there might be other questions as well. There's uh, <coughs> one of these says commit to transition Woodstock to net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2030, something Mary <coughs> referred to. But I'm not sure exactly what that means, how to accomplish that, what it would cost, and how you go about that. <coughs> so um, when you say we, you, you're asking for our support to this is what we want to do. It's hard to do without a little more detail. That for me it is. Well, that's why we want to change that. Um, put the word aiming at 2030. It's a very ambitious goal. Most of the yeah, scientists are. Well, most of the scientific. Um, most of the people are saying by 2050, mm. but there are many scientists who think that's going to be too late. So uh, I know that Hartford passed passed a resolution for climate emergency and they did they did say that wording of 2030 so i guess if we said aiming at that it <coughs> would mean that we'll, we'll do our best and and not have it be that that is a set goal but <coughs> but a aspirational goal really and do the best we can yeah. as far as what it means for the net zero <coughs> as i understand it um i'm not sure whether 
it would just be the town and the village um, and, or, and a plan how that would go with residents, you know. So it's more like this is for the structure of the town and the village. Um, and it is, uh, there are a lot of good things that we want to do on there, but mainly a plan for ten, a 10 year plan to get to where we need to get to. And that's why um, we feel so strongly that we need an energy coordinator position because I don't think that the select board or the trustees really would know how to make that plan. So um, I think his name is Jeff Martin, is on the board of Sustainable Woodstock, but he's the energy coordinator for Hartford. So he's been helpful in, in showing us how to go ahead. And any of the questions that we don't know, um, we can find out. So there's like a solar field concept or something <coughs> to that extent of where even like village businesses could buy into the solar that would be part of maybe a plan i know that what the town and the village have done already is a lot by i mean zach was spelling out last night at the energy meeting all the things that you're already doing so that would all accrue to that mm -hmm. the the rest of the things of how it would go how it would be beyond just solar or heat pumps or maybe electric vehicles, but maybe some tree plantings, maybe some permaculture gardens. I don't know how the plan would come, but it would be widespread, and I think it could be very exciting. And, um, you know, so uh, I guess our feeling is, and why we've worked on it, and the Change the World Kids helped us get signatures too, is that we, we we're about to be too late <coughs> to fix this, and so we want to, um, <coughs> get a full commitment to it and then have somebody make a plan that's doable. That well, I actually think that this is kind of the right way to do it because if you don't have everybody on board, what's the point of a plan in the first place? And you get everybody, okay, we all want to do this, now let's get it done. So I applaud you for what you've done. So uh, with the change of uh, aiming to transition Woodstock to this, uh, I would certainly support it and entertain a motion that this board... Uh, I would move that we support and approve this resolution. Second that. Um, any other discussion on it at this time? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, you. Thank you for taking Thanks, the lead on such an important issue for the whole world, actually, but we can, can do something in our little part of it. So that's, that's great. Thank you both. Thank you for what is already being done, which is yeah. great. Thank you, Mary. Mary's been guiding this guiding us, getting us back on course, and I appreciate that. Harry guides us in a lot of ways. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, sure it's the town's mom, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we get Tesla cruisers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> good, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. So, right on. Yeah. They're fast. Dave said segue. I'm saying Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's move along. Uh, we, uh, next on the agenda is to review uh, and sign the warning for the annual village meeting, which will take place on March 17th. And I hope that those people who are watching this, as well as those who are here, all uh, plan to come to the village meeting, have your say, hear what's going on. And uh, that's how our small democracies work as real democracies, is when people are involved and take part. So that's March 17th. It's from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The voting is from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And I understand three folks are uh, running for um, office. And uh, I know at least two of them are present tonight. Um, oh, um, she was. She left. She's in the I think she moved. Oh. oh, she moved on. Brenda, yes. oh, did she leave? I thought Brenda she left. left. Oh, well, left. Brenda Blakeman was here. I know she's running. And uh, and uh, Daphne Lowe is here, and I know she's running. And there's one other. Seton Gilroy. Oh, Seton, Hi. I'm sorry. I don't know you. That's okay. Uh, I'm Seton McElroy, and I'm also running for trustees. Yes. So we have three folks running, and that's, that's wonderful. And that will take place on March 17th. And uh, we... Uh, have the warnings, everyone? Has everyone had a chance mm -hmm. to look through them? <coughs> I, saw, I saw nothing out of place myself. 
Do we need to move to approve or accept? Yes. Yeah. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the warning uh, at the annual village meeting for March 17, 2020, as presented, say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Okay. Next on the agenda. What do I do with my agenda? Here we go. Yeah, thank you. Um, update on dangerous and vacant uh, building and property ordinance. Now, um, the the town uh, passed an ordinance in 2019 for uh, dangerous and vacant buildings uh, and properties, and uh, that, of course, includes uh, the village in that. And Dave Green, our fire uh, chief, uh, is here to give us an update on at least one property. I understand, Dave. Yep, yep. So this went into effect this summer, and uh, immediately after it went into effect, I got a complaint on the building in the vill village, which I, uh, I investigated and deemed it was vacant and unsafe. So I've started the process of uh, trying to take care of this, and to date, it's still not taken care of. Uh, this building's in a little bit of a gray area where the owner um, is in a nursing home, had a stroke, can't talk, and no family wants to take care of the building. Um, so I'm being told the mortgage company that owned it or owned the mortgage uh, has, hasn't uh, responded to anything, but we found out that another mortgage company bought the mortgage from it, even though it's not on paper anywhere. So we've started the, pro or I've started the process of finding them. I've mailed them $6,800 in fines. Uh, my next step is hopefully um, that they change the deed here in a few days and I can really go after them in court, i.e. to get the tickets and also to tear down the porch and remedy it ourselves <coughs> and then put a lien on it and collect the monies whenever the building is sold. So this building's a little South unique Street. from what I'm being told. It's on South Street, right? Yeah. Yes, it is on South Street. South Street. Yep. So it's a little unique, kind of a gray area in the building, which I think we might find often with these vacant buildings that... Uh, I see the neighbor there hanging around. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Any, uh, any update on the Central Street yeah. building? That is that what it is? 61? 60. On uh, which one? The one on Central Street. 61. 61. 61. Central. The old Lavin building. Uh, no, I haven't. Oh, yeah. I have not looked at that one yet. I'm trying to get one under my belt and get the process before I throw another one. And I know there's another one waiting in the wings to come in right behind it. Um, but it's all new to me. It's a learning process. And since going to court, I don't want to get three or four thrown into it and screw them all up and have to start over again. Yeah, so. you might start the initial process, though, consider that for 61 Central. I mean, that is an eyesore and becoming a public danger um, in some ways, uh, yeah. right there. It is on my radar. I mean, it would just be like sending out letters to all of the ones that are really of concern that kind of meet that criteria, right? Well, yeah, then there's an inspection process, and if they don't follow the meet me at the inspection, I start fining, and if they don't follow that, then I have to take them to court. Um, right. This 39 Central Street is probably going to cost us $5,000 in lawyer's fees. And the fines that we'll actually collect are probably going to be 800 bucks. Which building is that, David? Uh, 39 South. Oh, so, okay. You said, I thought Why you said are the Central. fines we actually will collect are only 800 uh, Because there's a waiver fee. Uh -huh. And even if they refuse to pay and the judge forces them to pay, yeah. it's still 100 bucks. So one of my recommendations is once we get a new manager here and town meeting's over is to change the waiver fee up to the $800 mm -hmm. or somewhere thereabouts. Make it so more like the yeah. short-term rental ordinance in yeah. the village. Because right now I have a lot of time and the town has a lot of money invested into it. Yeah. Not much has happened yet, but it's it's moving forward. Well, thank you for that. Yep. No problem. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Um, other business. There's uh, the only other thing I'd like to bring up for the board is you know we have the village warning uh, that we have approved coming up and if we do we want to divvy things up? What do you want to do that next month? I'll do highway. Um, I did government last year. I'm happy to do government again. 
Okay, so there's general government. Uh, you just uh, took the easy one. I think the one that doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> I did police the past two years. <laughs> okay. I'll do police, whatever. <laughs> okay, hold on. We'll do it one at a time. So if I do general government. <laughs> then uh, boards and agencies. I'll do that one. Okay. Carry boards and agencies. Carry. And then uh, police. Fine. Yay. <laughs> No, <laughs> Carrie Egan is very enthusiastic so, about doing so, the so police budget. So. No, it's fine. Okay. And then Anna, um, how about you do everything else? <laughs> Which is miscellaneous. Basically. Sure. Okay. I'm all over it. Okay. All right. So thank you for taking care of that little bit of business. Uh, okay. And then uh, any other business to come before? Trustees tonight, before we go on to approved minutes. Hearing none. I would move that we adjourn pending approval of minutes. Well, let's, can we approve let's approve the minutes first, and then how about we do the pending review and expense bonus? I didn't notice anything. Um, I have to say, Nikki Norse. Yeah, man. You are, you get an A++. Plus plus. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm looking for grammar errors. I didn't notice anything. Me. Great job. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> so, um, so Spell finish. check works good, right? It does. Nice. <laughs> I moved to, I moved to approve as submitted. This is for the January 14th board meeting. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor of approving those minutes? Aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes carry. And, and then I move we adjourn pending, um, pending review of expense, expense warrants. Expense Okay. Thank you all for being here tonight and for your input and care about this wonderful village. Thank you. Thank you.